Hi, Vanessa here and welcome back to my channel. This is going to be something a little bit different. I am going to vlog as I read Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. And you've seen me talk about this book in my October library haul and my top five Halloween books to read. I am doing a buddy read with fellow booktuber Designs M Studio. And I thought it would be fun to um, share my experience as a first time Stephen King reader and a first time horror uh, novel reader in a long time. So I'm going to read um, a little bit every day and I will come back and share my thoughts with you in case you haven't picked this up yet and you want to know if it is doable. Um, like I said before, Stephen King said this is the scariest book he's ever written. It was written in 1983. So for some reason, I think like things that were written before has a little even more like scary surrounding it. I don't know why I think that, but I think things from long time ago are more scary than things of today. This book is about, it's about 400 pages. So um, we are two weeks to Halloween, so perfect time to start reading it. Uh, one fellow YouTuber actually commented on my video and said he laughed during this book. I think he also said he doesn't get scared quite easily. So we will see if there's any laughing bits or if I'm just completely um, scared and I got myself in too deep. So stay tuned as I check in as I read Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. Hey guys, welcome to my first check-in of reading the pet cemetery by stephen king this book is 400 pages so i thought i would check in once every 100 pages and this is going to be a disclaimer that i will be talking about spoilers in the book i'm just gonna talk about my thoughts and what has happened um, so if you wanted to read the book maybe step back from the video and come back when you are finished and also to give you some context of how scary i find most things i couldn't like really watched the, I think it was called the House on Haunted Hill when it was on Netflix. I pretty much missed like three quarters of it because I had my eyes closed most of the time. So I just get scared really easily. Now, knowing all that, the first 100 pages, I wasn't scared at all. I didn't even really hit one on my scare meter. And I think that it was more about character building, building up the framework of the story. Stephen King introduces us to Lewis, who is a doctor, and he just got a new job at a university in Ludlow. He is married to Rachel and they have a six-year-old daughter named Ellie and an infant son named Gage. When they move to their new house, they realize that they have a pet cemetery that dates back to the 1900s, just um, a little ways from their home. Because they live on a road where truckers really frequent, a lot of animal accidents like, sadly happen and so hence the pet cemetery and then across the road they've also made really good friends with a senior couple named judd and norma who have been on that road since like the early 1900s so they're really a wealth of information now nothing totally horrific has happened on his first day at the job a student does come in with a bash skull due to a motor vehicle accident and he dies that night lewis sees him at his house and the student leads him to the pet cemetery where there is premonitions and threats that something is going to happen to lewis now when he wakes up he kind of writes it off as like a nightmare or a hallucination until he opens the cover of his bed and he's like, oh my goodness, my feet are muddy, my sheets are dirty. So it really did happen. But, you know, self-preservation, he thinks, okay, maybe I just, like, I had sleepwalking issues. So he writes it off again and nothing really happens like since then, um, everything's hunky-dory, life goes on, and he is getting into a routine with his new job, his family is settling in, and that's really all that happens in the first 100 pages. Now, 
we do get hints of Lewis's character that something is off with him. And it's not outrightly said or anything that he does. It's just a feeling that I get with some of his thoughts that don't correlate with what we think we know. Like he sometimes has dark thoughts about his family or he alludes to things that he's done in his past that are kind of shady. So I do wonder if I got this wrong, that Pet Cemetery might be more of a mental um, scariness versus actual like ghosts and zombies and things like that. So I guess we'll find out um, more in the next hundred pages. I am also reading during the day because I think that it's less scary. <laughs> but I guess that defeats the purpose if you are wanting to read a scary book to kind of freak yourself out. But that is my strategy for now. I'll check in with you at uh, page 200. Hey guys, I finished the next 100 pages and now I'm halfway through the book and things are finally starting to happen. So Lewis's family goes away for Thanksgiving and he doesn't go because he doesn't like his family um, in-laws and he stays at the house by himself. He gets kind of drunk and falls asleep and then his neighbor calls him and says, I think you need to come over here. Your cat is dead. And this is the cat that Ellie, his daughter, has really loved and she was even contemplating on him like dying because she heard about this pet cemetery and she was really worried about it. And this cat is only like three years old so at that time, Lewis was like, it's not going to happen. He has a lot of years. And then he's like, oh shit, the cat died. And so now he's like freaking out. And his neighbor, um, Judd, says to him, so how much do you love your daughter? And he's like, what? And basically Judd says, follow me. And I guess Lewis just blindly follows him into the night. Um, they hike to Pet Cemetery and even a little bit beyond Pet Cemetery into like foggy lands, into like an unknown place in the woods, and they bury uh, Churchill or Church, which is the cat. And, and that is that. So he's kind of like thinking about not telling his daughter the truth when she calls to check in. And that's like a part where I mentioned that he's a little bit shady sometimes. <laughs> And then the next day, the cat comes back. Yeah, so the cat comes back and the cat is alive, but also weird. So I guess a zombie version of the cat comes back and he's kind of like off balance and he's kind of creepy. So when then uh, Lou Lewis's family comes back and they notice that the cat smells like the earth which is kind of gross. Like it, they go into such detail of the sour earth smells. And it's funny because for a guy who really wanted to bring, like who was so devastated by the cat, he was worried about it. He starts to treat him like, like crap. Like he would try to um, sweep him out with a broom or he doesn't, doesn't want to touch him. He doesn't want the cat to sleep with his daughter because he's just like not so sure about you know what this cat's deal is. And his neighbor basically says to him, yeah, I took you to an ancient Indian burial ground that has powers to restore pets, um, but not like fully back to the way it was before. So in these hundred pages, the cat comes back and it's just kind of creepy, but not terrifying. And it seems like the cat is annoying the family more than causing any type of like horrific events. And then in this section, um, the neighbor's wife dies of natural causes. And I was actually thinking that they would bury her in the ancient grounds to kind of like revive her, but that didn't happen. So I thought that was where it was going. We do get to learn more about family life, more about Lewis and his thoughts, which are pretty normal. We find out that his wife had like a, a horrible anxiety around death because her own sister Zelda had like spinal meningitis and she suffered such a painful death and she was just really guilty for um, wanting her to die quicker because she was a young girl and the 
the illness really took on its own life. It was just really bur burdensome for her. So um, we've discovered that. But other than that, my scare bar is maybe at like one and a half. I mean, the cat was pretty creepy. But other than that, I didn't feel like the jitters yet. So now I'm heading into the 300 pages mark and we'll see how it goes from there. Um, things are starting to get really cold and creepy around here. Last time I told you, Lewis had buried his cat um, in the ancient Indian burial grounds and brought him back to life. And so life has been going on for Lewis until it hasn't. And so one day he was playing chase with his son and his son runs off into the road that has claimed so many of the animals and the truck driver was just like being possessed or he felt like he was had an urge to put the pedal to the metal and he ran over Gage dragging him it was really gruesome the way that it was described um, he lost his head there are bits and pieces of him and so this really devastates the entire family and really shatters everything they know. And so a big part of this section was um, surrounding around grief and how his family was dealing with it. In the first two parts of the book, I told you that everything was hunky-dory and that Lewis was just going about life. He is a doctor, so everything he, um, all of his actions are propelled by his scientific knowledge. And when he had brought his cat back, it started like, I, started, I guess it started wavering because he wasn't unsure how science could actually do something like that. And I think he's been kind of putting it off, not thinking about it too much. But with the death of his son, he has really started to unravel. And we see more inner dialogue from him that is kind of like playing devil's advocate on certain things. And of course, his wife is completely broken down in her grief and they have to learn how to deal with it. Now, the daughter is also very shattered, but she is experiencing premonitions and nightmares, um, mostly about things she shouldn't know about. So it could be that the darker side is giving her these visuals and that even for a five-year-old, that's very frightening. And she has a hard time articulating it to her parents, but we can see that she is also devastated. And so we learned that the ancient Indian burial grounds also has these um, evil powers. Now, of course, of course, Lewis has a thought of burying his son there so he can have him resurrected. And his neighbor, Judd, foresees this and says to him, you are not the first person to think about this and you saw the way that your cat came back. How would you feel if your son came back just like not even a percentage of who he used to be and he goes on and he shares a story with him about how um maybe 30 or 40 years ago someone had tried doing that and the son was actually more like a demon who came back and he was just not himself and in the end um, the father had to shoot him and also shoot himself because he couldn't live with what he did so judd tries to you know, block Lewis off from having those type of thoughts. But Lewis drowning in his own grief, um, he's still struggling to, to as of what to do. And we see that he actually goes through with the funeral of burying his son. So that is where we are stopping. Um, again, the scare bar is not that high, still at one and a half. Um, but now I can see it's more of like, something internal that maybe is scary, that you wonder how far people would go, how they unravel as like life's shitty cards are dealt to them. Okay guys, finished. Okay, I finished it and I just noticed the back, it says sometimes dead is better. I finished my first Stephen King novel and I wanna say that it was an enjoyable read. Stephen King is definitely a good writer but on the claim that this is a scary book i didn't uh, feel it my scare bar never hit over two out of ten so i'm really proud of myself that um i made it through this book now for the last half of the book last time we checked in unfortunately lewis's son had passed away and he did go through the funeral but 
he just couldn't take it. He couldn't take it that if he had known about this Indian burial ground to resurrect his son and he didn't do it, then he would probably regret it for the rest of his life. He saw that his wife um, was just so broken and you know, he says, like, I will love my son no matter who or what he is, as long as I have him. And so he sends his wife and his daughter away to his in-laws and he devises a plan to go to the cemetery and kind of like exhume his son. And at this point, Lewis is kind of unrecognizable to me because in the beginning he was so sh like sure-footed. He was a doctor. He did everything that was like just very normal and by the end he is just starting to unravel and he has all these um, illogical thoughts and so he basically goes and he digs up his son and they actually cover this part quite in depth so he you know they describe the smell they describe what they see and it's very detailed um, so if you are get creeped out about those type of things um, then you will in you will enjoy the way that Stephen King had written that. And so he does and um, exhume him, he takes him and he, you know, pretty much lugs him to this Indian burial ground and he buries him. Meanwhile, his daughter and his wife are freaking out because his daughter gets a visit from the dead student in the beginning in her dreams, warning her that something is gonna happen to her father. So for a little, you know, five-year-old girl, that's just really freaky. And so she throws this tantrum and she says to her mom, you need to get back to dad. And now the wife is freaked out and just wanting to fly back home. So she calls the neighbor and says, uh, you need to check in on him and the neighbor partially feels like responsible for all this because he's the one who introduced him to the Indian burial ground in the first place. And so they try to work together, but they don't see Lewis. And by the time the wife gets back and she visits the neighbor to try to kind of get an explanation, the neighbor is dead. And who is responsible for murdering the neighbor? It's actually their son who end up coming back. And so you get this like two-year-old infant toddler just going crazy on this like elderly neighbor and killing him with the help of the zombie cat as well and so when lewis goes over to visit his neighbor he finds his neighbor dead and not only his neighbor he finds his wife dead at the hands of his infant toddler that he had resurrected so it's a horrible scene um, he discovers that this neighbor that he has been friendly with has died. He discovered that his wife has died all because he decided to bring his son back. And so he has no choice but to kill the son and also kill the cat. And as if that is not enough, for some reason he decides to take his wife and put her in the Indian burial ground. And something interesting is that his hair has turned white from all this action. And I think it's because of either being stressed out or he's made some sort of deal with like the evil powers um, of his life in exchange for her life. That's just my theory. I'm gonna have to crawl the internet to see what everyone else says. And at the end, um, she does come back and she just says one word like darling and so that really leaves it hanging i mean as a reader you can kind of assume that she came back but she'll come back like everyone else has evil not really herself and she probably ends up killing lewis so the point of this book I'm not sure. I would say that it's, you know, people having a hard time of letting their loved ones go and they will always take them in any type of form over saying goodbye to them. But Lewis's madness had drove him to, um, you know, he saw what happened with his cat. He's a logical person, but he still did it with his son. He did it again with his wife without thinking of the repercussions, repercussions, <laughs> repercussions uh, that his daughter has to face. Um, and so, you know, he either did this out of extreme love or he, he just wasn't himself at the end. Now I'm going to check in with my buddy to see what she thought of the book. Um, for my first Stephen King read, I thought it was enjoyable and you can really tell a good story. It felt like you were there. I did have a lot of visuals as I was reading it. Um, 
Yeah, you know, now I think that I could try to read other Stephen King novels. Um, if I could do Pet Cemetery, I can do anything. Uh, someone also told me that Pet Cemetery is now a movie. It's been done twice, once in the 1980s and once recently. So I guess it would be kind of cool to see what the visuals look like in movie format. But yes, thank you for uh, sticking around with me as I read Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Um, if you had read it before, uh, let me know what your thoughts are on it. And if you haven't, now that I've spoiled it for you, um, let me know if this is something that you think you would have been scared of. Happy Halloween, everyone. I wish you happy reading and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.